Keller beer is an old German beer style dating back to the Middle Ages. Its literal translation is cellar beer, but unlike other beer classifications, this one is not quite as straightforward as the other styles I've brewed. I'll explain why, and I'm excited to show you how to create your own frozen yeast bank. This is saving me a fortune in ingredients costs, and it involves using sciencey looking things. Hi, I'm Martin Keen, and I'm taking the homebrew challenge to brew all 99 beer styles as defined by the BJCP guidelines. But it's those BJCP guidelines definitions that have got me scratching my head a little bit today. So typically, each beer has its own number and letter assigned to it. Uh, for example, when I was brewing Czech lagers, I had Czech pale, premium, amber, and dark lagers, and they were each assigned their own code. Keller beer, however, has two different varieties, pale and amber, but they're both stuck under 7C. Not really sure why that is, but I've got to pick pale or amber. I've gone for amber because that sounds like a, a bit more of an interesting beer. So while the pale Keller beer is really a light summery drink, the amber Keller beer is a much older style and it's a bit more reminiscent of English cask ales, which sounds great to me. So that's what I'm brewing. Um, the ingredients for this, for the base malts, I am combining a two to one ratio between Vienna malt and Pilsner malt to give me a nice bready texture. So that means I have seven pounds of Vienna malt and three and a half pounds of German Pilsner malt. Then just to deepen the color and give it a bit more flavor, I am adding three ounces each of melanoidin malt and Caraf 2. Mashing in at my usual 152 Fahrenheit for about an hour, I'm looking to get to a pre-boil gravity of 1046, which will give me a beer of approximately 5.4% ABV. Come on then, while this is mashing, let's go talk about my yeast bank. And that solution is stored here in my freezer. It is a frozen yeast bank. Now for each yeast strain, I'll start off with 10 vials. So what each vial consists of is one tenth of the yeast in a given yeast starter. And when I want to use this for a new beer, I'll take one of these vials out, defrost it for a few minutes, and then pour it into a new yeast starter to start my yeast being built. The yeast in these vials is frozen, it is not dormant, and it shouldn't be dying off. So years from now, I should be able to take one of these vials and use it in a yeast starter and have about the same viability as I would do if I used one today. So let me show you how to do this because I need to do this now for the yeast that I have for today's beer. That's WLP820, and I don't have that in my yeast bank, so I want to add it. What you're gonna need is some glycerin here, and a pint mason jar. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna mix a combination of 25% of the glycerin with 75% of the water, and then you're going to use a pressure canner um, where it will stay in here for about 10 minutes. Once you've done that, you will have your cryopreservative, which you can use multiple times. So I have got here 10 vials. These are 15 milliliter in size, just with screw cap tops. I have a six milliliter syringe. So this part is straightforward. You build your yeast starter. I'm using these fast pitch cans here as I'm too lazy to build my own yeast starter. And then add the yeast to it. Put the yeast on a stir plate, let it spin for a couple of days and then put it in the fridge so that the yeast will settle to the bottom. Decant your yeast so there's really just the yeast cake left at the bottom and just a little bit of liquid to cover it. 
and then give that a shake to get it all mixed in. So I've decanted everything except the yeast out of that flask and then moved it into this sanitized pint glass. And now what I'm going to do is take each one of these vials, which I've also put in the star sand here to sanitize, and I'm gonna put in six milliliters of the yeast and combine it with six milliliters of the cryo preservative. Now to freeze these, I can't just throw them in the freezer, even with the cryo preservative in there. I want to do that using isopropyl alcohol. So what I've got here is I've just poured some of that into here. I'm just gonna throw these guys into the alcohol. So this will limit the formation of any sort of ice crystals that are gonna damage the yeast here by freezing them more slowly in this. I'm gonna leave it in here in the alcohol for a day or so, then I'm gonna pull them out and then put them back in here. And also I tend to just uh, write the, on the label here yeah, what the yeast is. It's a pretty handy thing to know. So the mash has gone as planned. I've got a 1047 pre-boiled gravity. Now when it comes to hops, this style of beer is actually pretty hoppy compared to the other German lagers that I've worked on. I'm going for an IBU of 35. Now to get there, for my bittering hops, I have one ounce of Hallertau Mittelfrühe, which I'm gonna put in here at 60 minutes. And then for the flavor and aroma hops, I'm combining Hallertau Mittelfrühe with Northern Brewer hops. I have half an ounce each of Hallertau Mittelfrühe and Northern Brewer. And with 10 minutes left, it's the same thing. Half an ounce each of Hallertau Mittelfrühe and Northern Brewer. The interesting thing about the Keller beer is how long the fermentation cycle is. Typically with a, a lager style beer, you ferment it for a couple of weeks and then you lager it for you know, three or four more weeks on top of that at least. This style of beer is supposed to be drunk young. So when fermentation finishes in about 10 days or so, I'm gonna move this to a keg, carbonate it and drink it much earlier than I would a normal beer and, uh, and see what I get from that. So it's tasting time. I have Rick here with me. Welcome. Thank you. So what we've got here is a amber Keller beer. Uh, what do you see with the color? Oh, it's a beautiful color. It's it's very dark. At, at, at first glance, I thought it was more of a stout, but yeah. I mean, it's, it's very nice. It's got a beautiful dark tone to it. Um, you know, as I as I smell it, it's, it smells like it's got some honey in it, some type of honey or, or sweetness, but more of a honey Hmm. honey smell to it. There's uh, another aspect to it as well, which I, I won't mention until Honey and molasses, kind of a molasses uh, Molasses, honey. you think? Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, it, it smells like that. It smells sweet. Without tasting it. it. Yep. Well, if you can get through all of that foam. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. Let's give it a try. Yeah. So you're still getting honey and molasses or something different? No, something different. Yeah. Totally different. Yep. To me, it's, it's quite malty, uh, sort of a dark malt flavor, not, not roasty. Um, also a little bit sweet as well. Definitely. A little bit sweet, Some a little sweetness. bit uh, a little bitter at the end. So the thing that I hadn't told you about the beer uh, that makes it a little bit different is this style of beer is served quite young. So mm. um, it's a lager and typically with a lager you'd brew it and then you would mm. lager it, which just means store it cold mm -hmm. for uh, six weeks or so. Um, this style of beer you're supposed to drink it young. So this is about well, actually this is four weeks old. That oh, wow. is wow. much earlier than I would typically serve a beer for tasting. As it ages, what it, what happens as it ages? Does it change as far as the flavor and taste of it? Yeah, I think as, as it ages, it would sort of round out a little bit more, be um, less spiky in, in the flavors that, that are there. So like okay. the bitter flavor, I can definitely taste that, especially mm -hmm. the aftertaste. Um, the aroma does smell a little bit young, to me, mm -hmm. um, so but that's that's what the style is expected to be, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I, I think if you were to try this beer in a month, it would be a bit more subtle, a bit more well-rounded. It's very nice. 
I've been with all the beers on the market with all the hoppy beers. And friends of, of mine know that I, I'm not crazy about the real hoppy beers, and there's so many of them. Yes. But this is very smooth, very elegant. Yes. But, yeah.